Bugaboo's spending a lot of time inside and chunking up. We're running the propane heat in the RV. Jesse's wearing his vest full time now. Full time, but I didn't wear it all yesterday. <laughs> hot tub filter. Nasty. We're so done trying to clean this thing. And here's the new one. Much better. see you this evening. That looks incredible, love. Ah, it's our big ICF, leaning power of ICF. 
I think you have to kind of think long term with some of this stuff because I don't know when we're going to get to use that, you know? Yeah, it could be years. <sighs> it's kind of the frustrating part. Like, we had really good intentions with all this reclaimed materials and we've actually used. Gosh, I'm actually proud of us. I'll bet we've probably used over three quarters of those materials. Mm -hmm. You know, between the firewood shed, the cabin, the deck, the garden. Yeah, we've done great, the pile shrinking. We burned through a lot of it. You know, some of it's just, we've been kind of picking and choosing what we use because we kind of. I'm kind of just, in the mood to keep cleaning up. Yeah, believe it or not, all I'm trying to do is make room for the timbers. <laughs> yep. But I'm trying to do it. Um, is there the more with that planning. I can help you with? Because my goal is to get you milling. Yeah, I'm pretty close. Just need to kind of give it a look over and see what else. Okay. I know the eye joist, uh, you know, trims need to go somewhere. They're really not good for anything. Uh, and if they get wet, they'll just turn to yep. junk. I mean, they won't turn to junk right away, but. So, Have yeah. them in the house. The Getting garage. really close. Yeah, to be able to unload the sawmill and get to work. So if you want to give me a hand. Okay. today we're basically ready to start milling our little hearts out however it's not that simple we're gonna start getting lots of large timbers and storing them for the next three weeks until the workshop is extremely critical also we really don't want to move them more than once or twice so we're really trying to plan ahead and thinking about not only where we want to set them, but our goal is to have tents set up all over the property, probably two to three 20 by 40 tents where we can lay all these timbers out, similar to what was done at the Shelter Institute, because we don't know what the weather's going to be like at the end of October, and we really want to make sure everyone that's coming to the workshop has a comfortable place to work. We have no idea if it's going to be raining or not, so we really think that's wise. Um, that said, there's a lot of cleanup that needs to be done on the property for that to happen. This morning we had to get a couple of milled timbers off of the sawmill. We also have a bunch of scrap stuff on there that Jesse's going to go ahead and turn into dimensional lumber. And we decided we're probably going to store all that in the garage until the workshop. We actually had a really long conversation last night uh, on the way home. And we were just talking about everything that we have to do between now and the workshop. And it honestly scares us. We're not at all concerned that we're not going to be ready. We're going to be ready. It's not a choice. So one way or another, we'll get it done. But still looking at our to-do list is extremely intimidating. We don't want to be scrambling at the last minute to try to get stuff done. We'd love to be done like a week early and then we have a week to just relax a little bit, tidy up, make sure our work site's extremely comfortable for everybody, things like that. That said, we also have snow in the forecast. I don't think it's serious. There's just little snowflake icons on my iPhone. If it snows, it certainly won't stick. The temperatures are dropping and we're being reminded on a daily basis that winter is coming. So in addition to having to be ready for this workshop, we also have to be getting ready for winter and that has nothing to do with milling. We have this exposed trench that we have to get backfilled because we have far too much invested in our water system. So we're trying to get that winter ready this week. We have some exciting stuff coming up on that. We're actually gonna have our pump guys pump that full of sand for us. You don't wanna miss that video because we're not gonna be able to fill it on our own. It's just not gonna happen. And while we want to do a ton of property cleanup, we just have building materials and reclaimed materials, firewood stuff, strewn everywhere. In the car last night, we kind of talked about how it's really important that we get milling. We really want to get through this first batch of logs. 
I better go talk elsewhere. Can't talk over here because the generator's running. This looks quiet. We really wanna get through our first load of logs because we think that's gonna give us a lot of confidence. We kinda of have an idea how long this will all take, but we're not positive. We don't know if we can mill two timbers in a day, 10 timbers. We don't really know what's possible. We also don't know if we're gonna run into problems like maybe the butts of the trees are too big for the sawmill. We don't know. So right now we're trying to find that balance between getting back to milling and getting the property, um, I guess, cleaned up and ready for the workshop. We're kind of doing some temporary stuff right now, and we know that we're probably gonna have to move our timbers a little more than we would like, but again, it kind of goes back to, we're really feeling the push, and we feel that someone needs to be running the sawmill pretty much round the clock. That person is probably going to be Jesse. There is, There are some things that we'll have to do together um, and at some point, once Jesse really has a system, he'll probably train me on that, and then I can kind of be the relief shift. So that is our grand plan. And as with most things, we don't know if it's the best plan, but we have to get started because we can sit here in analysis paralysis forever deciding which order to do things in. So in the end, um, if there's a little bit more work involved than necessary, that's fine. So on that note, Jesse is going to be working on milling up that lumber and probably getting through, I don't know, a tree or two today. I'm not really sure. And I'm going to work on some other tasks. We have some trench maintenance to do. We have to get the conduit laid to the top of the hill. I think we need to get a load of water. There's a lot of videos to be edited. And if all else fails, I might try to fire up the chainsaw, get comfortable around it and start working on turning some of this junk around our property into firewood. All right, coffee breaks over, back to work. I bought these ear, ear bands that I'm really excited about. I hate the big ear things for ear protection and little ear buds always get lost and they're really hard to put on with gloves. So the guys at Les Schwab wear these and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try that out. I think it's the best of both worlds. you to come outside today. Hey buddy. Oh, hi. Bugafish. Bugafish. Come here. You gonna make me chase you? Hey. Hey. Bugaboo. Oh, he'll give in. He'll give in. Oh, yeah. Bugaboo. Pretty good. Hey, buddy. Oh, why are you being a lover? As you can see, we didn't quite get all the way to the top of the hill with our conduit. We just did what was absolutely necessary to begin the house build. We did run tracer wire to the top of the hill. Um, yeah, so I did notice that a couple of our encasement connections came unglued, so I'm gonna make sure those are tidied down. I might take a conduit measurement to see how much conduit we need because hardware store is closed on Sundays. Haha, -ha, the culprit. Dirty dog. So it appears this piece just separated all together and there's no 
pulling down or pulling up. So that really sucks. You can tell we haven't been up here in a while. There's pine needles everywhere. And I don't know, this looks like it's not gonna be a simple project. I'm feeling deflated. Setting. If you want, I can help you get this on and then go to the hardware store. That'd be great, yeah. Um, Unfortunately, I do appreciate help out here on this type of stuff because, yeah. I don't have to extra, go to the hardware store. Extra set of hands. I don't have to get on off the back out a thousand times. Yep. So, especially when there's a log in the air. Yep. It never excites me. We bought shackles yesterday. Anyways, by the looks, you've done a lot of planning and measuring. I've literally spent 45 minutes trying to turn this log. Really? From here <laughs> to here. And the arrow was painted to uh, see how far you've moved. <laughs> well, I had terrible luck at the hardware store. I needed 40 pieces of conduit and I came back with seven. I needed like five, six sweeping elbows. I came back with four. It's about par for the course. I think with this, this beam, when I'm all done cutting it, could be worth, I don't even know, $700, $800. Kind of piggybacking on what I was sharing earlier about preparing for the workshop. Do you believe every log will be like this? Or so far, do you think this is a learning curve issue? I, well, I mean, it wasn't gone for that long. There's but. a lot of learning here. Like I, had, I couldn't, I can't even move it. I, I can't huge. even move this log. Yep. And every time I try to move it with the back cut, it wants to move the sawmill. Exactly. Mill. Yep. So I literally have to lift it and turn it at yep. the same time. So I, I do to, think two people be easier with that. I have to grab it over here with the grapple and lift. And so while I do that, it turns the log. Like I don't know. I. I'm doing a test to see if I can get a monster out of this. Mm -hmm. Like an 8x12 or maybe even an 8x15. Just because I want to challenge myself to get the biggest stinking beam I can. That way when I look at those logs and I look at this log, I can tell you, like, is it going to happen or not, yeah. you know? And I think for something that valuable, how could you not take a couple of hours Yep. To get the log rotated, you know? Well, it's an exercise in figuring out exactly how much you can get out of a log. Well, what's frustrating is this log has two flat sides. It's really straight right uh, through here and through there. Mm -hmm. But it's got a big bow in the butt right here and a big bow in the butt right here. So I'm trying to cut this bow off and this bow off and then I'll have a pretty straight log. Mm -hmm. I mean that gonna, that could be a ridge beam or a top plate, which are the some of the hardest timbers to get. So yep. it's slow. I might not even get this cut tonight. I don't know. I'm yep. Not gonna worry about it. I'd rather I'd rather cut the hardest beams first. That way we're kind of in the clear and we can kind of just take it easy and, and yep. you know speed it up. I don't know. Ooh, she's feeling toasty. 
Nice. Don't worry, it's not that hot. Only on the surface. Feels more like, mm, 98 or 100. It was pretty nice. Well, that's all you guys get for a video today. I kind of had in my head that we were going to get a lot more done, but like with everything, it's kind of a planning day. Just did a lot of cleanup. Um, I got all the parts we needed for finishing our electrical conduit up the trench and just struck out. I know there's some, it's probably not a lot, but some of you out there that get really, really frustrated when we don't do a lot in a day. And these videos aren't for you. This is a reality of building a house. Um, and, and actually, we did a lot today, but as with always, trying to film stuff, especially when we're trying to make huge monumental progress, not just on building, but planning especially, it's really challenging to film and we don't just wanna talk about what we're gonna do and all these ideas in our head. We're really just trying to take action. So hopefully after a couple more days of this stuff, we'll really be rocking and rolling.